Let's just recap sketching polynomials. So we're looking at polynomials. We did, of course, look at this earlier in the year when we were talking about sketching different functions in general. But just a reminder, things to look for when we're drawing our polynomials. The y-intercept is, of course, the, the constant. Same as in the linear function. So if I've got something like this, and I don't need to expand the whole thing out, I just look at the constant in each of those. I've got 1 times negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, times 2 squared, we're up to negative 4. We can plot that in. The x-intercepts are the roots of the, well, remember the subtle difference? Yeah. The x-intercepts are the roots of the, which one? Roots of the equation, zeros of the function. So let's find those nicely, it's factorised for us, so we can see them straight away. We've got that one at negative 1, and there's one at positive 1, and another one at negative 2. But we know that. As we are out of the extremities, it will act like the leading term. Because we're substituting in such a big number, then really we only need to look at the leading term because the rest becomes insignificant. For our one, we've got x times x cubed, so that's x to the power of 4, times x squared, so x to the power of 6, which means it would start up there just like x to the power of 6 would, and would finish over there. Now remember, the, when they're factorised, they will behave like the power. So what do I mean by that? Even powered roots will look like U shapes. Higher the power, flatter at the base, steeper at the sides. Here we have an even power at x plus 2. So over there at negative 2, we know it's going to have some sort of U shape there. The odd power roots, other than the power of 1 of course, odd power roots will have that inflecting shape. Over at positive 1, it will look like a cubic. We know it goes through there. So we've got to go through all these points. Got to start up here. There we go. Now, the actual location of this vertex, now that we've done a little bit of calculus, we, we could work that out, because uh, we know at that point, the tangent would be horizontal. So we could solve the derivative equals zero. We could get the x value and make that even more accurate. Well, can't make it even more accurate. That is the graph, but sketch could be a bit more accurate. If it can be completely factorised, so it's a perfect cube, quartic, whatever, then it's just going to look like the basic curve, because that's what we've got. The basic curve shifted. This one here, though. Hmm, OK. Let's draw it in. There it is. So let's go over all those features again. Uh, first thing was the y-intercept. The y-intercept, negative 1 to the power of 4 is positive 1. 1 cubed is also positive 1, so we're still at 1. 2 squared is 4 times negative 2, so negative 8. Negative 8 is where we are. Our x-intercepts, 1, but it will be to the power of 4, so we have a u-shape, but being the power of 4, a little bit steeper at the sides, flatter at the base. x plus 1 cubed is going to come through as a cubic at negative 1. x plus 2 squared would be like a parabola at negative 2. And x minus 2, power 1, which is going to be like a linear function, so it goes straight through. We know that the leading is x to the 4, x cubed, so that's 7, x squared, that's 9, x, x to the 10. Now it starts up here, finishes up here. There is our picture. Again, we could find exactly those three turning points by investigating when the first derivative is equal to 0. When is that tangent horizontal? A quick little recap there of sketching our polynomials.